Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. And I have to tell you, was we the main character today? Absolutely not. Was I completely paying attention to Chelsea versus Watford on a day like this where the relegation fight, the title fight, the Europa League versus Conference League and the Champions League fight was going on? Absolutely not. And if you were, then you're just an absolute diehard and fair play to you. I would like to think I'm a diehard, but I would also like to think that I've got my priorities in order with the Premier League and the madness that happened today. We weren't that team. We weren't. But we did win 2-1 and it was a weird team. You know, we got to see the likes of Kennedy. Kennedy finally makes a, a, a game. So we bring him back on loan. A player that if you're going to bring back, I'd actually like to see a little bit more of. You know, let's see what he can do. But we don't use him. We say, oh... We're going to save you for the final farewell of the season. Today was all about goodbyes. You know, whether it was Malangsa, <laughs> whether it was Kennedy, whether it was Rudiger, whether it was whoever, you know, it was about goodbyes. There wasn't really many youth players involved. There wasn't really a, a change of formation to, to throw us into the new era, Bowie's boys era into next season. It was all about farewells and goodbyes and tatas. Barkley gets his goal. Kennedy gets his assist. It's a weird day. It doesn't really make any sense. It's at home to Watford, a team that we expect to beat. But at the end of the day, we know what our season is at this point. We're just petering along to the end. Um, but we got third. We finished the job and we did our thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So can't really get too aggy about it. Kai gets his goal. Great stuff. There's not really too much to analyse and to emphasise. But what I do want to talk about... Um, is of course we're going to do a little bit of an end of the season review. Now over the coming days I am going to do position for position or department for department. I will review the goalkeepers, I will review the defenders, I will, will review the midfielders and then the forwards in four separate videos. But I just want to do a, a end of the season Chelsea review type thing for today um, before I do a Premier League season review tomorrow or a Premier League final day review tomorrow. Um, Chelsea, at the end of the day, our season is all about context, but also just not quite being exactly what we need to be to compete. Um, and what I mean by that is I don't really feel like at many a time this season, Chelsea have not won or not performed due to effort, due to application. I think it's been either fatigue or quality that has cost us the most this season, whether it's because we've been playing a bundle of games, travelling to Russia, to the Middle East, you, you've got yourself the Club World Cup ridiculous amount of competitions that we were involved in and ridiculous amount of games getting to two finals of two domestic cups. Fatigue, mental fatigue or physical fatigue has definitely played its part when the depth of the squad has been called into question and not potentially been good enough to rotate with those seniors as much as we would want. I would call on the likes of Sal Niguez not being able to rotate, who did play today, but not being able to rotate as strongly as we would have hoped with a Jorginho or Kante or Kova, for instance, you know. Um, but, you know, when you take a look at the situation, you say to yourself, if we had a stronger squad from a depth standpoint and people were pulling in the right direction in terms of adding to the team and not taking away from the team from a systematic point of view or a quality standpoint, then we would potentially have propelled ourselves further in the race for the title and in the Champions League. You know, when you look at City, when you look at Liverpool, their depth is just better than ours. We thought our depth could be talking to theirs, but we can't chat Patty to them at all because Diaz comes in, you know, for, for Marte, for Mane, you know, uh, for, for Man City, a bundle of players. Gundogan comes on today, gets the winner, gets the goals that mean the most. He comes in, makes impacts. We don't have players that can do that. Our starters, you know, you wouldn't be able to go through every single starter and say that they are even potentially good enough, let alone, let alone the bench. But if the starters are starting and the starters are doing their peak performance, then you could definitely say, as we've seen at times when we do compete, against the Liverpools and the domestic cups that we are a very good team. However, like I said, depth and I think ability has cost us. There's a lot of raw minerals, more raw materials that are missing from this team, you know, when you're talking about, you know, elite passing against those low blocks, elite level goal scoring, elite dribbling. Those three components have been why, for me, we've struggled the most at home this season. A while home record is absolutely shambolic. You know, away from home, there's bigger pitches, more grass. Gazelles can run free, Timo Werner's, etc. against Southampton. But when you look at that home record, you know, where teams sit back and you need that little extra bit of craft, that extra bit of crisp passing. We don't have it. We don't have the dribbler like an Eden Hazard, really, who's going to skip past two or three players. Individual brilliance is not a crime. Systems are definitely, you know, 
the the be all and end all these days but individual brilliance is not a crime and a little bit of individual 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 brilliance <laughs> wouldn't kill us we got a bit of it with Ziyech against Tottenham with that absolute thunder bastard into the top corner Rudiger against Brentford Cover against Liverpool with the goals of the season contenders Mason Mount with the volley against West Ham but not enough individual brilliance because now you're relying completely on a system that really doesn't it, it can't even make sense because there's so many different profiles and, you know, flaws that need covering up. There's, there isn't a Liverpool or City where everybody plays in the same style, is able to interchange and overlap, things like that. We've got players where they come in and the whole formation needs to get changed. You know, we're trying to do possession, but some of our players aren't suited for possession. But yet we dominate possession. We come up against low blocks with counter-attacking strikers. There are so many reasons as to why this team doesn't make any sense. And why would it make sense when you have had four managers over the past six years or whatever it is? It wouldn't and it doesn't. So there's so much context. There's so much to talk about. Um, and that's not even just the fact of remembering they are human and those off the field issues would have made a difference, you know, whether it's players kicking up a fuss or swearing in Spanish or, or, or doing CNN, you know, welcome to my crib interviews, all the way to, you know, your, your ownership and all that, that kind of stuff that not only affected us as fans and literally sent us into disarray, but it would have affected players, especially players that probably support the club and have been through thick and thin with the club or are looking for new contracts with the club, expiring at the back. There's so much, there's so much to discuss. But like I said, it wasn't for me capitulation, apart from that Brentford game. It wasn't for me a lack of application. It was more the fact that we just don't have the quality. And sometimes you just have to accept you're just not that good. You're not as that, you're just not that guy. You're not that guy. In comparison to your Liverpools and Cities, we're just not those guys right now. That's fair enough. You have to come, come clean and accept that. But next season now, I need to see two cool who's been tremendous, by the way. I know he's definitely made his errors and he's come out and said that and he's been very, you know, clear about those errors, those tactical tweaks that he may have made like at home to Man City or, you know, those moments against Arsenal at home that the lineup wasn't quite right. He's definitely made his errors. He, in no way is he perfect, nor is any manager. You know, Klopp had an injury crisis and then started moving midfielders into defence. Pep in the Champions League plays no DM. Every manager has his flaws and have his human errors. You know, that's just going to happen. But on the whole, the man has literally propelled us to new levels that we really don't, we don't really deserve to be in, in terms of our actual quality. And when I say that, I say Champions League wins. I say we haven't made a Champions League semi-final before that win since 13-14 on Mourinho when we got knocked out by Atletico Madrid. It's not making sense. And you have to give the man his plaudits. But now what I need from him is to be strong. Strong and stable, as they say in the government. I need the guy to literally put down his fist and say, I want this, I want that. I need this guy out. I need that guy in. You've got to be strong now. Because I feel like a lot of Tuchel's tenure is about accommodating. And accommodating, accommodating is absolutely crucial under the previous tenure, the, the Roman era. You've got to adapt. You've got to, you know, put the team before yourself. Forget your principles and your philosophies. To hell with that. You've got to make sure that that team can perform at its optimum level. And that means plasters. That means covering over wounds. That means systematically you've got to sacrifice your own beliefs potentially to get the best out of players that aren't, you know, the be all and end all, but can give you this, but can't give you that. That has now got to come to an end. Klopp and Pep and many other top managers have literally prided themselves on what they believe in, their team, their environment, their values, their ethos, their philosophy. And that team that they put out speaks those truths. We don't do that. We don't have that. But now we have the opportunity to get that done. And that's what this transfer window needs to be, that transfer window that I'm going to cover extensively. That's what this new team, hopefully next season, with all those goodbyes, I need them to actually be goodbyes. Much love and guidance, but you actually need to leave. Don't actually think that you can walk back in here like Bakayoko in pre-season and come to America. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Don't, don't even think about getting on that flight. Thank you, but ta-ta. Off you go. And hopefully that is exactly what happens. But like I said... It's going to be a process. It's going to be a, a long process for us. At Chelsea, we're not used to processes, projects. And I don't like those P words. You know, I'm not interested in that. However, however, this time, with this level of manager at the helm and with, like he said, just pure honesty, a drop-off in quality or we're not going to potentially improve in quality because we are replacing senior figures, we are going to have to accept that we're actually just rebuilding. And I know Man United have got a lot of airtime media-wise about their rebuild. And because we're not in a catastrophic situation, hanging and dwindling in sixth and seventh, we're not going to get that airtime. But believe me, our rebuild and our 
structural change at the top to the bottom is just as big as any other club in this country right now. Just as big as Manchester United, just as big as what Arsenal are trying to do with their rebuilding situation. We are also rebuilding and I want that to be in your noggins going forward. We are rebuilding. Are we going to rebuild correctly? We will see. But we are rebuilding and we do need to rebuild. Um, and I think our points tallies over the last four or five years speaks volumes on that. But like I said, finite margins, people, and the little percentages make a big difference. And if we had walked away with two domestic cups and two penalty shootout wins, everybody would have lauded this as a great season. So just because we don't get those two kicks at the final whistle against Liverpool, I'm not going to mark it down as a horrendous season. There's been moments where we've shown our quality, you know, at the start of the season, people are fit, people are playing, we're top of the league. Yes, we're not really sustainable because attackers aren't firing, but we think at some point these attackers are actually going to start scoring goals. They're going to adapt to the system. There won't be no drama, no palaver, and we will reign, reign free and, 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 and come to prosper, come to, come to see our, 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 our stars will align. But unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that didn't happen. And that winter, we just absolutely just just we died with the with the with the spring, you know, we, not with the spring, but with we died with the plants. You know, we died with the with with the surroundings. You know, we were the trees with no leaves. <laughs> we struggled, <laughs> and it's only now that we've managed to just compartmentalize it and 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 look back on it and say, listen. It's over. <laughs> and thank God it is. I've been waiting for this day. Believe me, the final whistle against Watford. I've been waiting for this moment to come alive. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to do that. But let me just tell you, I've been waiting for this day. And at last, we're here. So we can now just put a little line on this season. It's been freakish. Like I said, it's been unprecedented. Now we can put a line in this season and just keep it stepping correctly. And that's exactly what we're going to do here on this channel. We're going to do a review of each position, like I said, in the coming days. We're going to talk about the Premier League final day tomorrow morning because that needs talking about. It's historic. And maybe just a roundup in general because, my goodness, Tomori has won a trophy. And this, <laughs> this is just a point that I'm going to make later on in the week. So just be ready for that. Um, you know, double standards and whatnot, you know. Lack of lack of perspective and whatnot, but I'm gonna get into that later. Just know that it's good that we beat you know Watford at home and got our three points and just ended the season on on, on a good note. Tuchel got his banner. He said what he said in his presser afterwards, and Todd Bowie looks like he'll be at the wheel in no time. Hopefully, we get a nice official confirmation. So all is not grey. In fact, it is very blue. You know, I'm moving, so you won't have to talk about the the wall anymore, guys. I'm going to be going back to my Irish household for a while with the shirt hanging up and a new shirt every day, etc. You know, these pictures will come down and go back up in a few months or maybe less in time. So, you know, end of the season vibes. We will discuss the more prevalent, prominent, interesting moments of the day tomorrow morning when it has all settled down and Saj has finished celebrating his Premier League win. Um, but until then, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're smashing up the like button and I will see you guys tomorrow. And I may just start doing double uploads over the summer because I really have this urging feeling to give you more content. It's got absolutely nothing to do with Google payments. So until next time, I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.